What's up, y'all? We are back here at GradX, and we are here with... Hedy from Digital Futures. And Mayan from Digital Futures. So, I understand that the two of you have a kind of, like, conjoined uh, project for GradX this year. Would you mind telling me a bit about it? Yeah, sure. So, our project is a 3D rhythm action game. And it's a collaboration of 10 students, four from OCAD, four from U of T CS, and two from U of T Music. Mayan over here was the team lead for our project, so he oversaw everything. We both specialize in different things for our project, but I can talk a little bit about what we were doing, and Mayan, if you want to go for that too. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, it's like a game that's a little bit of a commentary on today's discourse of man versus AI. But we didn't want to go too political with that, so we're doing something in the past, which is the Industrial Revolution, and we're doing man versus machines instead, which is why you play as a factory worker who got laid off for no reason, sneak back into the factory, hit this machine to fight for your right to work for minimum wage. Jeez, the storyline is crazy. That's, <laughs> like, that's like a John Henry thing. Yeah. Like, that's sick. And yeah, so the, the main selling points of the game is that um, it's a rhythm game, so I the... It's it's really for players who really enjoy a challenge and stuff because every movement and every attack has to be on beat to the song, uh, and so players can easily get overwhelmed if they just don't have a rhythm or they like start spamming right. And then the other selling point I would say is like the art style. We really went for this like patent sketchy drawing. So even though they're all three D models, like a lot of uh, viewers have uh, confused them for hand drawn like two D sketches. So it's like Spider Verse kind of. That yeah, kind yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. It kind of sounds to me like like Just Dance meets Street Fighter almost. <laughs> more like uh, <laughs> more like Just Dance meets like Dark Souls or something. It's a very like boss fighting heavy yeah. sort of game. Okay, okay, okay. So like what? First off, like I find it incredible that you were able to like get that level of coordination from like all these different institutions. Y'all got like the digital programming like Avengers going on here. It kind of sounds like <laughs> what? First of all, what like inspired this idea, or how did you come up with it? Second of all, what was it like trying to coordinate between that many like students at that many institutions? Mm. I can talk about the coordination, then you talk about like the idea. Yeah. So for the idea, well, we originally actually made a rhythm game back in the semester before this game. So it was for our thesis with two other people from Digital Futures. Shout out to Justine and Rowan. Um, like we made a rhythm game, but it was the first time any of us went that deeply into games because for me, I learned 3D modeling, but I didn't know how to animate clothes to it, how to import that into Unity. And then there was a lot of like, you like UV unwrapping and custom textures that I had to learn. And then for them, they learn a lot for coding and how to integrate that. And that was a lot to deal with too. So in terms of like just figuring out how a game works in a Unity and a game engine, it was like a lot of work and we didn't figure out too well the logistics. So then when we went to this 3D game design course, right, we were able to translate a lot of our skills, but we were focused more on why a rhythm game and why does it have to be 3D model. Yeah, and then for the theme itself, we did want to do something that was social commentary, but we didn't want to create a serious game because currently there's a lot of things going around with the world that's like so serious. And you know, it's just every time you open up the phone, you check the media, you just feel so fucking depressed. Doom scrolling. Yeah, so real. So then like for us, we just wanted to choose something that's more lighthearted, that can keep people's attention for a short minute or like for a short attention span, but still get the message across. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate that. So, yeah, would you mind telling us a bit about like how the coordination went? Yeah, of course. Um, so the reason why we are like collaborating with UFT students is because of the class it set it set up for us. So uh, it's three D game design. Um, uh, and within the class there are sort of three professors: one for the art department, the code department, and then the music department. Um, and so the way that it works is that like uh, you just pitch in ideas. If your idea gets chosen, you become team lead. So the I had to really like quickly learn how to sort of get good at project management and all that stuff. So like just a glimpse of like our work process, uh, we would have weekly playtest sessions. So after every playtest session, uh, you know, uh, she would take notes and stuff of everything that was said. And then I would review the notes, which usually were like three, four pages of just writing. And then I would sort of have to like decide what tasks are relevant, what are doable, which ones are 
uh, not th not so great suggestions, and then transform those into like tasks, detailed tasks for the rest of the team to do. And so on a weekly basis, I would be basically creating like an agenda to for like so it's, these are the next deliverables for the following week. Uh, this is when I need to get them in by. Uh, if you are unable to sort of get them in in time, then please let me know. We can sort something out. Or uh, you know, talk to somebody else maybe, and then see if like you can like redelegate the sort of uh, role so that somebody can cover for you and stuff like that. Uh, so it was a lot of you know, typical like team management, project management stuff. Um, but it was sort of crucial towards the end, especially during crunch time, where we had to get a lot of progress done within a very short time period. And uh, we actually only had ten weeks to work on this game. Ten weeks. Yeah. <laughs> All this. Yeah. <laughs> Ten weeks. Yeah, it was uh, it was extremely stressful. I would say this course is um, it's a lot of effort, and because I knew that ahead of time, I sort of planned my courses around it. I took less courses this semester so that I could put in more effort on this other three D game design. Literally same. Well, still, that's hella impressive though. All that in ten weeks. <laughs> Thank you so much. That, I'm I'm actually blown away, yo. It's literally kudos for my end because it was like you know for me I did most of the art stuff and the visual direction things but it's like you know i still have my own specific role and i just needed to complete that for him he had to coordinate all of the art side and the cs side and in order to coordinate that you have to actually understand what's going on with the programming side and be able to know how to code to get shit together so it's like a lot so it's of almost like you side. need to know everybody else's job almost as well as like they do yeah. Absolutely. But I think that's where being in Digital Futures helps because I already had a lot of classes that taught me how to code, so it was easy. And because we took uh, thesis the semester before and we already made a rhythm game, mm -hmm. I was the sole, co sole coder in that thesis project, so I sort of uh, became familiarized with all of the systems required in the rhythm game. So that was extremely beneficial, I would say. But um, I also had a lot of help with the project management side from my friends um, Hedy and Justine. They really helped me a lot. Uh, to sort of make the process easier because it was extremely overwhelming for me, especially because I had two other classes to worry about as well. But, jeez, whoa, that's that. I don't know about you guys at home, but like that's hella inspiring <laughs> for me. Like, oh, thank you. I know you mentioned that like it was like really a challenge for you to like step into this like leadership role. Is this like your first time taking this much of like a leadership role and stuff? Yeah, it absolutely was. Um, I always felt like I wanted to try it out, but this was actually my first time in that position, and also like it was a team of ten, so that was like extremely challenging. But I mean, I don't, I don't think overall it was too bad. Actually, like I would got you consider it a success? I do think it was a success. Uh, we also were pretty fortunate that uh, we basically had a delegation process before teams were set, where we could. Um, talk to people and then figure out like who you wanted on the team so there's a team selection process right and it was like very much like a little microcosm of like the larger market where you I, I felt like a job employer you know I was people keep people came Doing in interviews and yeah that. exactly people came in with like their pitches they were like I think I would be good for your game because of this and this and this I looked through some portfolios and resumes and stuff and uh, just to get an idea of like what experiences they had to think like Oh, this person is from has made combat games before. They'll probably be good for our game because we have combat mechanics in it, stuff like that. Nepotism yeah, so you as well. True, that is nepotism <laughs> always good. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I want to say always good, but like, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's around. You know. Yeah, it's just how it is. You know. It's how it is. It is yeah. how it is. So you got to be like Simon Cowell on like the <laughs> X Factor, like <laughs> deciding who gets to advance to the next round and shit. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that you guys have like pretty much reached the end of like your OCAD journey, do you have any advice for like first year perhaps students who are like in your program or like who might want to get where you're at or accomplish what you've accomplished in the future? I mean, honestly, uh, I think it's very different for us because our first. Uh, first and a half years were completely online because of COVID. So um, I can't say that my experience is necessarily like the typical OCAD student experience, but I will say in your first year, make connections. Like really like be, fr be the friendliest version of yourself and try to make as many friends as possible because that's something that I wanted to do, but I wasn't able to in my first year. And I all the meaningful connections I ended up getting were in my third and fourth year. And like they've been extremely like, you know, they've they've enriched my experience so much, but it would have been nice if I had one and a half additional years of that as well. I met you in first year, bro. 
Yeah, but we we didn't we didn't we didn't hang out until I came to Canada though, which is in my like second second half of the second year. Okay, literally. Okay, she is setting me up. We literally never spoke un unless it was within class. Okay, like. Damn. I guess that goes to show how like relationships can like evolve and like progress over time. I guess. Yeah, yeah, maybe this relationship won't last after graduating. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Find out next time. Find <laughs> out, yeah. Next next interview I do with OKU Live is going to be a solo interview. Yo, it's going to be a solo <laughs> <laughs> Post. All right, well, that's about all the time that we have here today. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you.